Welcome back, nerdlings. Today we're going to be talking about the cytoskeleton, which is composed of centrioles, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. So these are the centrioles of the cell right here, and in here we have some of the intermediate fibers. So the function of the cytoskeleton is for structural support and for motility. It helps to maintain the shape of the cell, and it provides anchorage for cell organelles, so they don't just flop all over the place. It provides locomotion for the cell in the form of cilia, which are those little finger-like, hair-like projections on cells. They kind of move them around. And flagella, which are those long, whip-like tails on cells such as sperm. They also serve for the function of regulation. They organize structures and activities within the cell. So the structure of the cytoskeleton. It's composed of a network of fibers that extend throughout the cytoplasm. And there are three main types of protein fibers. We have microtubules, these are the largest. We have microfilaments, which are the smallest. And then the intermediate filaments, which as you may have guessed, are in the middle or in between sizes. So looking at this cross-section of a plasma membrane, we have our intermediate filaments right here. These serve as real support, kind of like the rods and reels and wood that you use when you're making the frame of a building or a house, that's the same function that those intermediate fibers have. The microfilaments are right here, which are the smallest, and then we have microtubules right here, which are these little blue guys. So from an evolutionary perspective, proteins that make up the fibers are very similar in all living things. Whether you're a bacteria or you're a nerdling, like myself, you have the same type of structural proteins. We all have tubulin, and all eukaryotic cells have actin. This means that they are both ancient and essential for life. I would make sure I take special note of this slide because I guarantee you will have an activity asking you about this. Hint, hint, wink, wink. So the first type of microfilament we're going to talk about are microtubules. They are the thickest of the fibers, and they are hollow rods that are about 25 nanometers in diameter. They're constructed of the protein tubulin, and they grow or shrink as more tubulin molecules are added or removed. So if more tubulin molecules are added, they're going to expand and get larger, and if they're taken away, then they're going to get smaller. So it depends on how much tubulin there is. They function in structure and support, as well as cell movement. So they move chromosomes during cell division. If you remember during cell division, we have these little centrioles, if I could get one of them out from our cell, these centrioles get lined up at the poles of the cell, and they're pulling those spindle fibers apart. They also track and guide motor proteins that are carrying organelles to their destination. Motor proteins are myosin and dynin. They function in motility by composing or making up cilia and flagella. So as you see over here, this is what they're talking about moving organelles from one place in the cell to where they're needed. So it transports this organelle on our tubulin protein with the help of energy and the form of ATP. And where in the cell is ATP produced. If you said the mitochondria, you would be correct. So centrioles, which are these little guys that I plucked out of my cell model, serve in the function of cell division. They are only found in animal cells, and we have a pair of them, meaning we have two. They organize microtubules by guiding chromosomes in cell division. We also have cilia, and flagella. These are extensions of the eukaryotic cytoskeleton. Cilia are numerous and they have short hair-like structures, so they're kind of like little furry looking cells. And then flagella, we have one to two of them per cell. They're longer and whip-like. They move unicellular or small multicellular organisms by propelling water past them. 
The cilia are actually responsible for sweeping mucus and debris from our lungs, and then the flagella are responsible for movement of cells similar to sperm cells. So we have flagella on our sperm cells, or at least if you're a guy, you have flagella on your sperm cells, and that's responsible for propelling the sperm to the egg. Cilia have an oar-like movement, so like they're rowing a boat, and they have alternating power and recovery strokes, just like a crew team. Crew is rowing, for those of you who don't know. They generate a force that is perpendicular to the cilia's axis. So here's the direction of the organism's movement, and this is perpendicular stroke. The flagella have an undulatory movement. The word undulatory means wave-like motion. So my hand is undulating. And it is the force generated by a parallel to the flagellum's axis. So whenever we're talking about cilia and flagella, you need to remember the rule of nine plus two. We have nine pairs of microtubules that surround two individual microtubules in the middle. They are responsible for the bending of the cilia and the flagella, and they are driven by a motor protein called dynin. So dynin is the motor protein that's responsible for moving them. We also have actin filaments. This is the type of microfilament we're going to be talking about now. Microfilaments are different from microtubules. Microfilaments are the thinnest class of fibers. They are solid rods, not hollow, and they are composed of actin. They are twisted double chain of actin subunits, and they are about seven nanometers in diameter. They function in the three-dimensional network inside the cell membrane. They're also found in muscle cells. Actin filaments interact with myosin filaments to create muscle contraction. So right now, my actin and my myosin fibers are contracting, and now they're relaxed. This is a dynamic process. The actin filaments are constantly forming and dissolving, making the cytoplasm either liquid or really stiff for movement. The movement of an amoeba is actually created by this thing called cytoplasmic streaming in a, cells, in a plant cell. It speeds the distribution of materials. So if you look right here, it looks normal. Whenever the cell is moving, it's going to contract or become more stiff, and that's called cytoplasmic streaming, and it occurs because of those actin filaments that are contracting. The last type of filament we're going to talk about are intermediate filaments. They are specialized for bearing the tension in the cell, and they are built from keratin proteins. This is the same protein that your hair and your finger and toenails are composed of. They are intermediate in size, and they range from 8 to 12 nanometers in diameter. They basically hold things in place. They hold things inside of the cell, and they're the more permanent fixtures of the cytoskeleton. Like I said previously, they're kind of like all of those rods and steel frames and wooden frames of houses and buildings. They're the main frame network that really gives it structure and holds it together. They reinforce the cell shape and they fix the organelle location. The nucleus is actually one of the organelles that is held in place by a network of intermediate filaments. So in summary, we have three types of microfilaments. We have microtubules, which are the thickest of the microfilaments, and they are composed of our tubulin proteins. They serve for cell structure and cell motility. Motility meaning movement, like our cilia and flagella. And the dynin protein is what actually provides the movement of those two structures. We have microfilaments, which are the thinnest of the microfibers. They are internal movements within the cell, like our cytoplasmic streaming, and they are composed of actin and myosin. Remember, that's what's responsible for muscle contraction. The last type of microfilament we talked about, or microfiber, is the intermediate filament. They are intermediate in size, and they're the more permanent fixtures in the cell. They're also composed of keratin. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this lecture. I'll see you next time when we talk about cell junctions, which is where cells touch each other.